What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here. And in today's video, we are going to be building out an application using AI, more specifically using the AI IDE cursor. Now we're gonna be optimizing this app I already built in the last few videos called StrideTube. And we're gonna be using V0, Shad CN UI for the components, as well as Clerk. We'll be setting up Clerk completely with cursor for user authentication. Let's dive right into it. All right, so for those of you who aren't new to this channel, I did two videos in the last week or so. The first one was building a Chrome extension. So we use cursor to basically build a Chrome extension and I called that Chrome extension stride tube that we built. And this Chrome extension essentially was able to go to any YouTube video and all you would simply do is just copy the YouTube or you would click a button basically right down here and it would automatically grab the transcript of the YouTube video and then summarize that YouTube video, okay? And then in the next video we did, we actually took that Chrome extension and we converted it to a web app. So here we have Stride Tube Web, and this is a Next.js app. So, so we've been making these incremental improvements, but in today's video, we're actually going to turn this into an application, meaning we're going to set up authentication with Clerk. Well, we're not going to, Cursor is, and who knows, maybe we'll have to turn this into a series and continuously just keep on improving this one. All right. So, all right. So without ado, for those of you who haven't seen this app in action, I'm going to show you. So we're just going to copy this clip right here from the all in podcast. And I am going to go right to our app and we are going to paste in the video. And this is going to grab a, and this is going to grab a little thumbnail or well, not even a thumbnail an embed of the YouTube video right here. And then we're going to paste in our open API key. If I really wanted to, I could put this with um, really any type of, you know, uh, LLM. We could do Claude, OpenAI. We could even do um, potentially local models, right? So a lot of different options, but just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to stick with OpenAI. And uh, yeah, so once we do that, we just click summarize. And if everything goes well, boom, we have the transcript right here. And we have the summary. Okay, so that is how the app works. And one of the main things we're going to be setting up first is Clerk. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Clerk, uh, they claim they're the most comprehensive user management platform. And it is a very comprehensive user, user management platform. Um, for those of you, I did a video maybe a week ago showing you guys how to set up super base authentication using Cursor. And this process will be somewhat similar. Um, if for those of you who don't know kind of the differences, I'm not going to do a comparison between Clerk and Superbase, but Clerk is really good. It has essentially a lot of features out of box. Like we have two-step verification here. We have all these different pre-built components, like account um, components here. Uh, we have like, you can set up organizations, which is good for like a multi-tenant site, a bunch of different stuff out of box. Um, so it's really good for that. The downside is that you it's not open source in terms of something maybe like next off. And so you don't have, I guess it's hosted on someone else's server, your, your user database. And then also too, there's a pricing with, um, clerk. Okay. So not going to go over that, but there is a free tier. So you get 10,000 monthly active users on the free tier. And I believe you get a hundred, uh, organizations on the free tier. So for, for those of you who are using multi tenant site, now for 25 bucks, you can remove the clerk branding and you get a bunch of other stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and we're going to start off by one going to the docs here. Okay. And I'm going to go about this as if I've never used clerk before. Like I really don't know too much about it. And I just want to set this thing up on our next app. And that's what we're going to use cursor for. So what I would typically do is I would start by coming to the docs and I would look for different relevant docs for what I want to do, which for us, it would be Next.js. And this is the next JS getting started. So we can see all this stuff here and I could run this myself, go through the docs, try to set up the different components, but we're, we're not going to do that. We don't have time for that. So we're actually just going to go to cursor right here. And I actually did do a bit of uh, copy and pasting some of these docs um, before. So we got our getting started docs here. We have a bit of the UI components. I didn't copy the over the full docs just because there is a, a extensive docs. Um, but we're going to use some of this and basically I'm just going to go into composer here and we're going to see what this thing's made of first of all. So I'm going to, uh, add 
the UI components MD file the markdown and the getting started markdown into context. And if you don't know why I'm using markdowns and copy and pasting docs over here, check out my longer form step-by-step uh, -step cursor tutorial where I give you guys a free, I believe 16 to 19 page SOP standard operating procedure on how to use cursor in the most efficient way, how to set up your workspace and what specific things you should do in order to get the best output. Um, but for those of you who already kind of understand this, maybe you've been using cursor, we're going to continue on here. So I'm going to go ahead and write the first prompt. Okay, I'm also going to include this project structure MD file just for uh, context as well. And this is a pretty simple, short one, just concise. I mean, we don't really have a big app, but you can see here, we're showing the tree structure of our app here. We got our components. There's really not much going on in this app besides three components and a page.txt where we're rendering those components on. Um, and then we have a Python for those of you who didn't see my other video, how this is actually, how this actually works behind the scenes. We have a Python, a flask server that's set up too. So that's what's doing the, uh, getting the transcripts and doing the summer, uh, sending the API request to open AI. So if you want to pretty simple to set up, but we're not going to dive too much into the Python side of things. We're going to be doing the next JS auth and all this stuff. So check out my other video. I'll leave links down below if you want to see how we got to this point. Okay. So here is my prompt and maybe who knows, maybe we'll have to adjust this. Maybe it won't work the first time. We'll see, but it's please help me completely set up clerk auth for my app here end to end. I don't want to have to do a single thing, just create all the files, folders, middleware, protected routes, components, environment variables, etc. Tell me what commands I have to run and if there's any info you need from me or next steps that we should do after this, just ask or tell me. I'm completely new to Kirk and Clerk and trust you to do everything, okay? So we're just simply going to run this and of course we could use uh, Claude Sonnet 3.5 uh, 3 or we could use 01 preview just for the sake of this you know 01 is the new one I'll go ahead and start off with 01 and then we'll probably switch to Claude Sonnet for the more um, you know back-to-back -back tasks here okay cool so <clears throat> with 01 we all usually always get pretty extensive responses here so oh okay so this is Okay, I made a mistake. I actually sent that in chat, so it wouldn't actually create everything for us. Now I'm going to send this in Composer, and I just got it mixed up because now with the new update, you can see cursor can be in the AI pane on the, on the right side here, or it could also be obviously floating or in the big pane. Um, and we could use a notepad for some of this. I may actually go ahead and start using a little bit of notepads um, later on, just so we can see, because I know a lot of people were asking me, What's the difference between notepads and projects? So we'll see if we can utilize them a bit. No promises because this is a kind of a small project, but definitely we'll be doing more about notepads in future videos. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so we got the output from 01. Um, I'm going to be quite honest. I am not insanely impressed by it. I mean, it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and reject this and try this again. I'm going to use Claude Sonnet 3.5. And just see, we may go ahead and use the 01 one, but I just want to compare because um, just from looking at it, I can tell that it's, you know, could definitely be done better. Okay, to be honest, both weren't bad. Um, I think if we had a bit more of the docs, it would maybe set it up a bit better. But uh, let's go ahead. I'm just, for some reason, sometimes it doesn't do the... Um, it, doesn't, it won't start creating the files for you. So I'm just saying you should make the files for all the files for me okay so now we can see it's creating the files so it's updating the layout.tsx creating the header.tsx the source page right here for the dashboard um and then creating the middleware okay perfect creating the environment variable file um we're gonna have to add our keys in and then update next config sure okay and okay so we're gonna accept this and i'm curious to see if it's going to work out of box all right so when you go to clerk and you create your app here it's actually going to walk you through this pretty simple right here um to create your uh environment variables your middleware your clerk provider right here and then to create your first user we're going to do try to do a little bit more than just this setup and uh, let's go ahead and create copy these environment variables Okay, we're getting this error here. I think this, I'm gonna just copy and paste this into cursor. Okay, I'm gonna delete our next folder here. I think it's just a caching issue. 
Oh, I see what the issue is. So this is the annoying thing about LLMs. And honestly, if you don't know much about the um, what you're using, whether that's Clerk, Superbase, like for example, when I'm and when I was doing the Superbase, I mentioned in Superbase that Superbase auth helpers are depreciated, and I mean they still work. But um, for example, with uh, Clerk, with the newer version of Clerk, auth middleware is now. Uh, clerk middleware so that's what we want to use so that's why it's not working so um, those are a few things just a side note to keep in mind as you're building with ai you really gotta make sure you know um, you're using up-to-date docs or up-to-date this or that and even sometimes like you saw we are using up-to-date docs even though we only have a couple here like i believe it should mention we go clerk yeah, see, clerk middleware, it's showing right here how to add middleware. So I should have maybe specified more. Uh, this is a lesson within that first initial prompt. Don't don't go off your like training data or just do it the way that the docs say. Don't go, you know, anything outside of how the getting started guide references setting up the middleware and the authentication because that's what it did and it's using the outdated stuff, okay? So now that we got that okay so we're getting another error let me just put this into composer for all i know this could be outdated as well potentially the function i'm going to say reference the getting started md updated docs all right now i'm going to submit this with the error here see now it's apologizing saying i should have referenced the updated docs uh, let's correct this based on the getting started guide. Okay, so now it should be pretty good, I'm assuming. Okay, this is what we wanted. So that's actually my fat bad. I can't even blame Cursor for doing this because I noticed this. It didn't even have the, uh, the file structure set up right here. So always specify to use the most updated docs. And we still may even get some issues here. Actually, I need to go ahead and accept these first. Okay, that's really annoying because it literally just changed the middleware again on me, even though I referenced that doc there. So, I mean, it's just a lesson. You got to be kind of like really precise with when you talk to these things sometimes, because if it's just using old outdated data, then it could completely screw up things and you're going to get a bunch of errors. So, um, yeah, you do have to use these things, but you can't 100% rely on just cursor especially right now. Okay, it looks like we got things somewhat working now. Now, I will let you know what I said. Sometimes I get kind of angry with these models and I, you know, type in all caps or whatnot, but I said, don't change middleware anymore. And, and then I sent the error message, um, which was an outdated function, I believe. Uh, make sure you're using new docs from MD file, not your old outdated training data. This is new clerk update. I believe it got an update maybe like six seven months ago um you know i could be wrong but i think it was around that time so anyways now it's and also sometimes you need to tell it to not change the other stuff especially if you're using composer um chat you know chat it's a little bit different because it's not going to change everything you can select what you want to change for composer you kind of do have to um, be specific with it one that's that's another reason why if you guys didn't see my video on the new update like this checkout feature is so crucial. I've been using this thing like crazy. It allows you to go back um, and you don't have to be so, so worried if, you know, Composer messes you up anymore. Okay, so now we have StrideTube here. Let's go ahead and click sign in. Okay, so now we have our clerk set up here. I'm just going to log in through Google. Okay, we logged in. Okay, it looks like we still have that same issue on this other page that it did beforehand. So I'm just going to feed this and, and say, and fix it here too. All right, guys. So, I, I mean, hopefully this is a learning lesson for me that, that I already knew, but sometimes you make these mistakes and hopefully you guys got some value here from seeing and, you know, just reinforcing that you guys really need to be precise with your prompts, especially if you're using um, a, a software, whatever software it is, whether you're familiar with it or you're not familiar with it, Really make sure you're providing it up-to-date data. And not only just that, you really have to tell it, use this up-to-date data. Don't use, you know, your outdated training data.
Okay, I was running into some connectivity issues. Sometimes cursor does that, but uh, I use GPT for uh, GPT-01 Mini for this one. So hopefully it's good. I'm going to accept it just with the confidence knowing if it screws everything up, I can revert back to a checkpoint and it looks like it. Ah, uh, it's just super annoying that it keeps using the wrong stuff here. All right, so boom, we finally got here. We can see that we got stride tube here. Um, go to dashboard and we got our dashboard here. Welcome to dashboard user blank ID, whatever. It's a protected route. Only authenticated users can see this page and we have our content here. So I'll quickly walk you through kind of the back and forth. I went through a lot of it was just tedious, um, kind of me yelling at <laughs> uh, cursor, but most of it, it comes down to, like I said before, the, the initial prompt. All right. So obviously, you know, if, if you're doing a real project where you're setting things up and you're kind of taking it, I would suggest taking it a bit slower and kind of making sure you're going more methodically through it, unless it's something that you already know, like a hundred percent, or if you already have like the docs and the system and the prompt kind of ready and you know exactly how to tell it, then go, boom, go for it. But um, if you're kind of like trying to speed run, like what I technically kind of was trying to do for just, you know, just trying to get this done as quick as possible, sometimes you may not prompt it the best way, right? And I do a pretty decent job at prompting, but sometimes these LMs, especially right now, will make stupid mistakes, all right? So you really got to take accountability for that and realize that, you know, it's, you got to be very specific, all right? Even if you do a decent prompt and you may think it's not your fault, um, it, you got to be more specific. And sometimes even, even if you do an amazing prompt, they will still just start hallucinating and keep making the same mistake over and over and referencing old docs opposed to new docs. So you can see here, I'm just basically saying follow the markdown file. I'm getting this error. Uh, same issue. Look at the getting started markdown file. You're using the old way and it's doing it. And I said wrong again. I'm losing patience. Read before you speak. Look at the entire markdown file first. I said wrong again. Check the protected routes.md. Does that help? So I updated some new information from the docs here. And then it did some stuff. And I said, okay, great. It it did somewhat work a bit. And I said, you remove the some of the old um components, add that back in, and then um kind of mis misunderstood what I was saying. So went back and forth a bit, and then Basically, yeah, that was pretty much it. It did end up adding the components back in and then it started doing the same error again. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So uh, eventually I did get it to not do that error. And it basically right here, it's and changed the import of auth from clerk next.js to clerk uh, cert forward slash server. And then, and honestly, I wasn't even really looking too much at the code and examining it and trying to figure out why I was making a mistake. I was just kind of letting it run more or less. So if you're taking your time with a project and you're actually maybe analyzing the code a bit, um, you would probably be able to catch that a little bit sooner if you're familiar with what tool you're using. Now that I was just getting a hydration error, so I told it about that and then it fixed the hydration error. So now we are in our dashboard. So we have all set up right here. We can go manage our account. We have clerk, boom, and we have our app here. So all right, guys, so now that we set that up, I'm just going to end it off there. I don't want to make this video too, too long. Um, now, there's a lot more you can do with Clerk authentication. There's so many different features that Clerk has. And, uh, you know, maybe if you want us to explore more and go more in depth in future videos, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys want me to continue out building this app, maybe actually make it look somewhat more presentable and a little bit nicer and, you know, add some different features and whatnot, let me know. Or if you want me to do a different app or if you want me to do a video, just different video in general, let me know in the comments down below, guys. This video is really just supposed to show you a few different strategies you can use to take, you know, documentation from any sort of tool, library, whatever, and implement it using cursor without having to really do much actual coding or thinking about it. Kind of just taking that feedback putting it into cursor, letting cursor do the iterative process and try to troubleshoot, fix errors, etc. Obviously it's not perfect. And like I said before and showcase some of these errors that we faced, it's very important to make sure you're having up-to-date docs 
and being very precise with your prompts. You know, the more precise you can be right from the start, the more methodical you can be with your planning and getting everything ready is that's just going to shortcut your um, your project and getting the right outcome faster. All right. If you want to learn more about that, check out the video down below and my step to my step by step guide for using cursor creating. I give you a PRD, a product requirements doc template. So you can use that to outline your project and get really clear on where you want to go before you start just trying to rely on AI. Okay. So obviously because it's a YouTube video right now and we don't have five hours to plan a whole big project right now. Um, I was kind of rushing for certain things. Uh, maybe didn't take as long as I should have with certain prompts. So we encounter a little bit more issues. All right. But anyways, guys, if you're new to this channel, we upload videos every single day on AI, AI coding, automation, business growth, marketing, sales, etc. So if you want to stay up to date with the daily uploads and you got some value from this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with all the content. Other than that, guys, let me know what your thoughts are about Clerk. You know, do you like Superbase better? And how are you using uh, cursor to basically not uh, encounter some of these issues to mitigate hallucinations? Um, what are your thoughts on, you know, do you prefer O1 or do you prefer Claude for certain things? Do you like O1 more for planning or do you just like it in general, O1 mini or Claude? Whatever the case may be, let me know what your thoughts are, guys, down below. If you have any questions, let me know as well. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, accelerate your stride. Take care.